This is planet Earth. And planet Earth has a pretty big problem, and that problem goes by the name of global warming, otherwise known as climate change. The United Nations describes climate change as the long-term shift in temperature and weather patterns on the planet Earth. Since the 1800s, human activities have been the main driver of climate change, primarily due to burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas. Climate change comes with a whole host of bad effects, including more severe storms, increased drought, and rising sea levels. No, no, not that high. Not that high either. Seriously, actually, by 2050, sea level rise on U.S. coastlines could rise only really as much as 12 inches. Now, 12 inches may not seem like a lot, but that actually means that the United States will be expected to experience as much sea level rise by 2050, that's 30 years, as it has witnessed in the past 100 years. The three primary reasons for this rise is ice sheets melting, glaciers melting, and thermal expansion. Ice sheets normally gain and lose mass during the warmer and colder months, respectively, but the rising ocean temperatures, again caused by climate change, have caused rapid mass loss. Worse yet, the ice in Greenland and Antarctica isn't like an iceberg. It sits on top of a landmass, so when it melts, the elevated water all drains into the ocean, causing large amounts of ocean level rise. Glaciers are much the same, only they exist from snow being compacted into ice above the snow level. But they melt into water, and again, that goes back into the ocean. But if we're going to talk about melting ice sheets, then we also have to talk about the positive feedback loop that glaciers and ice sheets run into. A feedback loop in general is when the outputs of a system are looped back and used as the inputs of the system. And the positive aspect basically means that the outputs of the system will be orders of magnitude larger than the inputs, so any small change in the system will be reflected like tenfold every time the system repeats. In the case of melting ice, remember, the ice is usually supported by dirt underneath, and the ice, when unmelted, is usually a very clear white hue, which reflects both light and heat. However, when the ice melts just a little bit, it can expose some of the dirt underneath, which is a dirt brown or black, which is much more light and heat absorbent. So the dirt absorbs that heat, transfers that into the ice, and causes the ice to melt more, which exposes more dirt, which causes the ice to melt more, etc. A second feedback loop occurs when enough ice is melted that the structure of the ice is destabilized and cracks form. Those cracks then cause the ice sheet to have more surface area for melting to occur, which causes more destabilization, more cracks, more surface area, and etc. So ice melt is really an exponential process where sea level rise and it will only get worse as time goes on. And the final way that sea level rise occurs is through thermal expansion. When water molecules in the ocean become larger, they expand very slightly. But that slight change is noticeable in a body of water as vast as the ocean, and that causes sea level rise. Moving on to some of the effects of sea level rise, the three main effects are coastal submergence and flooding, coastal erosion, and salinization. Coastal submergence and flooding is expected to increase throughout the 21st century, and by 2060, even just this 21% increase in sea level will put 316 to 411 million people at risk for extreme sea level events, such as storm waves and extremely high tides, and etc. And in 2000, by contrast, that number was only 189 million. New coastal flood data has also emerged confirming that if coastal societies don't adapt, flood risks will increase two to three orders of magnitude, reaching catastrophic levels by the end of the century. Depending on the way and social and economic manner in which they choose to adapt, this could lead to a very large loss of life, property, and culture, especially for lower class people. Flood risk scenarios have found that hard coastal protection will be quite effective until about the end of the century, but under high risk scenarios and where we don't really deal with climate change properly, their effectiveness will decline rapidly after the turn of the century. Coastal erosion is quite possible an even worse risk, since sea level also contributes to erosion, which destabilizes the local environments. Globally, it's estimated that anywhere between 6,000 and 17,000 kilometers squared of land will be lost by the rest of the century, which could displace anywhere between 1.6 to 5.3 million people and create cumulative costs between 300 and 1,000 billion U.S. dollars. Of course, it's worth noting that a global approach really misses the individual nature of many of these situations, and primary erosion will most likely occur on recreational grounds, such as beaches or places of cultural importance, whose worth really cannot be calculated. 
With rising sea levels, saltwater intrusion into coastal aquifers and surface waters and soils is expected to be more frequent and enter farther inland. Sea level rise will most likely affect groundwater quality, although coastal floods do have the high potential to increase the water table level as well. The primary effects of this will really be felt in agriculture and drinking water's access to clean water, although salinization will also have an adverse effect on general vegetation on coastlines. Another effect on agriculture is that the increased salinization of soils really leads to soil degradation, which leads to lower agricultural yields. Finally, the increased sea levels can lead to issues with low-lying surface water, especially with salt water flowing higher up, especially in deltas and rivers. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to follow next time for mitigation and solutions.